So I think I may have touched on this one before, but um, inevitably it's going to get more traction as we get closer to the November presidential election, and that is the Joe Biden uh, allegations, or rather the allegations against Joe Biden. Um, my Wi-Fi is down right now, frustratingly, but um, I can still upload videos, which is good. Um, you know, I can record the video and upload it later. Um, which incidentally might explain the time frame on some of my videos. If I'm talking about something, I reference the time or particular event that has since been updated. Um, I seem to be having Wi-Fi problems these nights, so it means that it can take time to actually upload them. Um, I might watch uh, a royal night out there, being that it's V day. Anyway, to get to the point here, um, I um, I think it's all we one always needs to be a little bit cautious, commenting too much on ongoing cases, um, simply because no one knows the absolute truth. And I think that no no crime is perhaps as grey, in terms of how do you know the truth as sexual assault or uh, rape allegations? I say that because, you know, if someone uh, steals from a shop, um, their fingerprints can be on the stolen items. They could be caught on CCTV footage. Um, if someone, you know, if they murder a person, uh, their DNA could be found in the blood. There's a lot of ways to prosecute other crimes, but when it comes to um, sex crimes, whether it be sexual assault or um, or rape, um, it is more grey because it often becomes basically his word against hers. Um, I'm talking about the majority of rape cases which are male on female. I'm aware there's gay rape as well and, and that shouldn't be downplayed, but um, basically the claims against Joe Biden have escalated and uh, the woman who's making the claim, Tara Reid, who's a former employee, um, I believe in uh, former employee, just find out her background here. Um, yeah, the report doesn't say her background, I don't know much about her. It's interesting that she's being named though. In the UK, um, those making accusations have anonymity, so I'm not sure if that's a difference in the States. Um, but what's interesting is that now almost half of young Democrats want Joe Biden to be replaced after his uh, public denials of this. Um, so that's interesting. Um, basically, Tara Reid claims that Joe Biden sexually assaulted her in 1993. She didn't report it as such at the time. On the ground, she says she was too scared to do so. Um, Biden, of course, is a political veteran. He was a senator back then. Um, so, uh, presumably even at senatorial level, there would have been, uh, from her point of view, a degree of intimidation there in terms of reporting it, if, if what she's saying is true. Um, but there is an, an interesting thing that there's a generation gap difference with this. Uh, according to the Times, after viewing video of Joe Biden denying sexual assault, Democratic voters were asked whether the party should select a different nominee. Among all Democrats, only 26% 26 said yes, 61% said no. Under 45, notably, it was more 50-50. That is to say, 40% um, said yes, 42% said no, and 18% were in the middle. Um, 45 plus only 15% of Democrats wanted Biden replaced. Okay, there's, a, there's a different generational thinking at play there. And that may be um, an indication of me too. Um, now, it has to be said, Joe Biden's robustly denied this. Um, the US Senate has said it would not search its archives for records of a complaint that Miss Reid 56 has said she filed. Um, I'm confident there is nothing Mr. Biden said in last week's interview. No one ever brought it to the attention of me 27 years ago, any assertion at all. If there is a complaint, that's where it would be. And if it is there, put it out. I've never seen it. No one has that I'm aware of. However, the Secretary of the Senate said on Monday that the Chamber had no discretion to disclose any documents relating to Ms. Reid. So I guess she's an employee in the Capitol in the federal building as opposed to state level. Um, 
and Miss Reed says that she didn't file complaints uh, at the time, she was too scared. She was in talk to Fox News about a TV interview at the weekend, but pulled out saying she has received death threats. Well, that's disgraceful. Who's ever, whoever's making death threats against her, you know, that's abhorrent. Um, here's the thing. I thought a bit about this one um, because there is now, uh, there's been a wave of charges from the political right, from Republicans, from right-wing commentators, that this is left-wing bias and it's left-wing hypocrisy. Because when it came to Donald Trump and his infamous um, video, you know, where he uh, spoke about grabbing women by the genitals, um, Trump hammered for that, uh, and it was widely used against him in the election campaign. Hillary Clinton wasted no time uh, going straight in there. It didn't work electorally necessarily because Trump won, but um, I imagine it would have cost Trump votes. Remember, he lost the popular vote. Um, so the Democrats didn't hold back with that. And the Me Too campaign has been very, very vocal in its um, personal attacks on Donald Trump. I remember after, on the day of his inauguration, in fact, there was um, women's protesters specifically um, protesting against him on, on those claims. So the charge is that Democrats are now being hypocrites because they just want their nominee to beat Trump. So they're going to turn a blind eye there, the claims against him. And that, that may be true to an extent. It may be that there are some in the Me Too movement that are downplaying the claims against Biden, or at least not approaching the way they approach Trump claims against Trump. But here's the thing with both men. Firstly, both men have denied the allegations against them. Trump had rape allegations against him. Um, and both men do have a shady record. There's no question about it. Donald Trump with his sleazy comments. And Joe Biden, frankly, with a catalogue of footage showing him making inappropriate touching now, there is, I believe, a big gulf between inappropriate touching and, and full-on rape. Um, and just to double-check this, um, the allegations at the moment are of sexual assault. I, I understand not, not full-on rape. But looking at the footage of uh, Biden, you know, it's... It's been, it's going, I think for Biden, this could be like what the Hillary Clinton emails were against her campaign. And it was always going to be the case. I'm sure the Biden campaign would have had, um, would have expected this. But frankly, the candidate hasn't entirely helped his own case with his, with his creepy Uncle Joe, uh, sort of, um, body language over the years, to put it that way. Um, and that does not mean that he is a race, uh, rapist. It does not mean that he is even guilty of sexual assault, necessarily. Uh, in fact, the fact that Biden done those things publicly might indicate he genuinely was just very, um, very inappropriate. Uh, and uh, it was a very, very bad lapse of judgment. You know, the fact they were done publicly this wasn't in dark corridors. These were things that were done publicly. Although you might argue if he's going to do that publicly, then what's he going to do privately? But you could be sure that the Trump campaign is absolutely going to hammer him with this. So, I mean, if he is innocent, as he says, then he can't do anything else but deny it. Um, and he's got a right to defend himself. The thing is, both sides play politics with this. I mean, some Democrats would have absolutely convinced themselves Trump is a rapist. Now, we don't know that he's a rapist, he's sleazy. That doesn't mean that Donald Trump is a rapist. Um, likewise, those Republicans clambering to say that, oh, well, Biden must be a rapist or Biden must be a sexual um, pervert. Um, they, um, they don't know that these claims against him are true. And they're using it. So both sides are, are actually guilty of doing this. Um, I have to be honest, I am I find it a real pity that this is an issue with Biden. And I'm not saying it's an issue, I'm not saying it's a pity that the charges are being made against him. I think there are serious questions to be made. And definitely um, women who, you know, women do need to have a voice if, they, um, if they're making accusations. It doesn't mean they're telling the truth, incidentally, but they have to be heard. Um, and there has to be 
you know, we talk about presumption of innocence for men. There must also be a presumption that women are telling the truth. And there needs to be a very, very delicate balancing act of this. And that's why, it, like I said, it's so grey. Because no one except Joe Biden and this woman really know the truth. That's what it fundamentally comes down to. And it, it's inevitably going to be politicised because this man is now his party's nominee. He could well be the next president of the United States. So it is very, very important. Those young Democrats abandoning Biden, um, I would say to them, well, I understand you want to send out the message that you have consistent standards, but I am a bit uncomfortable about this idea that allegations in of themselves somehow equate the guilt and that someone should be vilified and punished, i.e. by a um, trial by media or by by even being denied opportunities, that's kind of a form of punishment before they've even had due process. Now, Biden might be completely innocent of the charges being made against him, in which case the call for him to step down, would that be fair if he actually does turn out to be innocent? Um, and these sort of things are very difficult because, I mean, what prosecuted Weinstein in part was that audio recording that the very brave actress took. She was threatened by his legal people, um, but she persevered. And that recording, I understand, was used as a large part of the prosecution that saw Weinstein put behind bars where he belonged, um, because it was damning. Now, unless a similar recording, you know, emerges of Joe Biden kind of making advances, it's going to be very, very difficult to prove this. And that's a difficulty. And people will inevitably say, well, why is she only coming forward now when it's election year? Um, and whilst I think there's no, absolutely no justification for death threats, the fact she's going to Fox News, which, you know, is a very pro-Trump, anti-Democrat network, will raise a few questions. Um, but that's not the same as saying, oh, well, Biden's innocent. We just don't know. And... I think the difficulty for Joe Biden is that his track record does actually damage his credibility. It doesn't mean he's guilty. It may be a very unfortunate coincidence that he has these, you know, inappropriate videos where he's touching women and girls in clearly quite inappropriate ways. Although I have to say a lot of those women um, were laughing, although there's some, there are some videos and photographs showing young girls, quite young girls. Teenage girls, where Biden's, you know, sniffing their hair and stuff. It's clearly, I mean, there's no way around that. That is creepy. It is. Uh, he himself has acknowledged this and he said he'll learn from that. Um, so I just don't know. Um, but I do think it's obvious that both sides use something like this as a, as a football. My own take is there has to be, people need to stop playing politics. They need to be consistent. If you're a supporter of the Me Too movement, you have to be consistent, regardless of whether the man is left wing or right wing. And if there are Me Too feminists who are kind of letting Biden get a free ride or they're not asking the same questions just because he is the Democratic nominee and he might beat Trump, you know, that's wrong. And there shouldn't be double standards. Uh, I read um, one opinion piece saying that Americans can tolerate liars more than they can tolerate hypocrites, i.e. Trump's a liar, but at least he's not a hypocrite. So that charge may stick if there's any more weight to these claims. Um, but like I said, I, I don't know how, I think there should be due process in these cases, but then what sort of evidence would be presented? I mean, it's very, because of the passage of time, uh, I assume there's no CCTV footage of it. Um, how do you prove something like this? You can't even use a lie detector test because of the tiny probability that they can make mistakes. I believe they're only something like 98% accurate. That's why they're not used in courts of law. Um, this is a difficulty. How can she prove her claims? And some might say it's unfair to put the onus on her. But unfortunately, there has been 27 years since this purportedly happened. Biden strongly denied it. Um, so how can it be proven? That's a difficulty. And 
it's actually a problem both ways you look at it. If he's innocent, it's a problem because there's always going to be a question mark there. And if he's guilty, it's a problem because he won't face justice. So that's why women really, really need to be given the confidence and reassurance to come forward at the time. And it's difficult, you know, when they say they're too frightened to come forward and then people immediately say, oh, she must be lying. So I think one useful thing about Me Too has, has been a way of reflecting on these things. I think women and other accusers, men as well, incidentally, need to have the confidence to come forward at the time. And they also need to know that if they do wait a long time, it will be harder. Unfortunately, that's just the way it's going to be because the passage of time will make it harder to prove anything. Um, whereas, you know, if, if something is, if there is accusation made at the time, there could be CCTV footage, it could be, you know, things are fresh in people's minds. There's a lot of ways that it could be um, approached that I think is more, provides more clarity. So let me know your thoughts. Um, I mean, this is going to be politicised. There's going to be a lot of Republicans saying, oh yeah, Biden the rapist, me too, hypocrites, etc. Um just as a lot of Democrats immediately believe that because Trump had made those sleazy comments, he must have been um, a rapist. I actually am not sure that Trump was. I don't know. I think Trump maybe uh, had disrespect for women, and I think he made a very, you know, he was just being sleazy with his comments, but it's not evident in of itself. Um, doesn't help his case, though. But both sides play politics with this, and to those who say that um, Biden shouldn't be um, given special treatment, I totally agree. But by the same token, there shouldn't just be an assumption that he is guilty. I mean, he is robustly denying this. So, let me know your thoughts.